If you've been having a little trouble getting your PoE combiner and splitter to work, you've come to the right place. Let me show you what we got here. We have two live feed cameras. We have two of the short cables coming off the splitter piece. Then we have what you would normally have as your long cable running from the splitter piece back to the combiner piece. And then we have the combiner piece right here. And then we have a PoE switch. You may be using a PoE NVR, that's okay. Then I got a monitor just to show you the live feed from the cameras. There are usually two main complaints that we get whenever people call in and say they're not getting their combiner and splitter to work. The first one, and it's, this is the most common one, is I'm only getting video to work on one camera. That's the most common reported problem. Um, of course, the second most common reported problem is I'm not getting video working on either camera. And I'm going to show you what the main cause of that is. 99% of the time, the issue lies within the cabling. And I'm going to go in depth on what causes the issue. Now, the important thing to remember are there are three total cables in your installation that you need to run a test on. And when I tell people to test their cables, they usually only test this cable. This is a, an important cable. It's the main cable that you run from between your splitter and your combiner. You do need to test that one, but you also need to test these two short cables that are coming off your splitter piece, the one in between your splitters and your cameras, because if there's an issue that lies in either one of those three cables, it's going to cause one of those two issues that I talked about earlier. And to run a cable test, all you need is something cheap like this. This is a cable continuity tester, and it tests for like skipped or crossed cables. And it comes in a sender piece and a receiver piece, uh, what I call a transmitter and a receiver. Um, um, this, they call this a master and a remote. Um, but basically, all you do is run a cable from one end to the other, and it's going to light up. And I'll show you here in a second. Um, but these are really cheap. Matter of fact, you can get one off Amazon for like 10 bucks. All you got to do is search network cable tester, and usually it's like the first result. Um, this right here, $9.99. That's all you need. And if you're going to run network cables, get something like that. It's, it's cheap, but it'll save you a lot of time and heartache. Okay, so let me show you how these work. All you do, you may have a fancier cable tester than, than this, and if you do, you probably already know how it works, but if you're just using these for the first time, these cheap ones, I'll show you how they work. All you do, I, I have a perfectly fine cable here. Whenever you test these cables, um, you want to remove the combiner and splitter from the equation. You're only going to test each cable individually. So let me show you how these work. Plug this one in right here. This is your master unit and this is your remote unit. And then you're simply going to turn it on. I'll show you what it does here. The master unit should show eight lights showing up in a sequence. That's good. Normally, always, you're going to get a good master unit that lights up. But if not, then you got a problem. But the most important piece is the remote unit. This is going to show you if you have any crossed wires or skipped wires, possibly. This one should also line up in sequence. As you can see, it's going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a good cable. That's what you want to see. I'm going to show you what a bad cable looks like. I have another cable connected. As you can see, this uh, the sheathing is cut quite far back, and I'll show you why here in a second. But this cable is also reading as a good cable. Um, but I'm going to show you what the most common problem is with um, cabling issues. That is a skipped wire. As you can see, there are eight wires inside a network cable. And what you normally have is one of these eight pins are skipped. And um, what, what normally happens is it's usually just a bad crimp or maybe a corroded crimp where one, one or more of those wires are being skipped. And I'll show you what that looks like on this tester. Um, as you can see, I got a pair of scissors here. 
and I am going to cut one of these. All right, so I cut the white orange striped wire. And as you can see, the number one is not lighting up. That is a skipped wire. That's not good. And if you have one or more skipped wires on your installation on any of these three cables here, you're going to have issues. It's not going to work. So you need to get that fixed. You need to recrimp your ends most likely. In worst case scenario, you might have to run a new cable. That's very rare though. It's usually a bad crimp. The second most common wire issue is a crossed wire. This is kind of hard to tell, but I have the picture enlarged here. So the first connector is good, you know, it's, it's crimped properly. This is what's called T568B crimping. And if you need a information, Google it, but that's the most common way you need to crimp a uh, RJ45. That's good. But if you look at this one here, look how it's different. Look, notice how pins seven and eight are crossed. That's an issue. Both ends have to be the same. Otherwise, you're going to have an issue. And I'll show you what this looks like on a tester. If you look at the master unit here, it looks like a perfectly fine cable test. And this is what sometimes people look at. Like, okay, the master unit is showing eight pins in sequence. But, but again, as I said earlier, the most important unit to look at is your remote unit. And as you can see here, when it gets down to pin seven and eight, they are not in sequence. It actually shows pin eight before it shows pin seven. And that's how you know you have a crossed wire. Um, it could be any of these wires or many, you know. Um, this is a mistake I made quite a bit when I first started out um, crimping cables. Even when you think you know you got it, it still happens even with professionals today. So this is why it's always good to run a cable test on all three of your cables. A fairly uncommon issue, but I still see it quite a bit, is you may be using only two pair cable. Now, most standard network cable is supposed to have eight total wires. That's four pairs. Um, two wires in each pair. But sometimes whenever you buy a, or a camera kit, they will give you cheap two pair cable. And this is for cost saving purposes. It works just fine whenever you're running one camera, but when you're running two cameras, it doesn't work. Or I mean, whenever you're running this, using this PoE combiner and splitter, it doesn't work. And you can tell if you have um, two pair cable by, well, number one, you can do it, you can tell by running a cable test, it's only going to show you four lights that are going to light up. But you can also look at the end of your cable here at, at, the, at your crimp, and you can actually look and see just four wires in there. So, again, if you have camera kits, or sometimes even when you buy cheap pre-made cables, this, this is, I've seen this happen too. And a lot of people use pre-made cables, especially for their short runs here. Um, you'll see this. So be sure to check all three of your cables to make sure you don't have these. If you do, you need to swap it out with standard eight wire cable. So in recap, you gotta make sure you have, your cable is eight core, which is four pairs. They are continuous and non-crossed. The only way you're gonna be sure to tell is if you run a cable test. You gotta run a cable test. The most common thing I get, that, or probably one of the most biggest responses I get when I tell people or ask people to do a cable test on their cables is, well, I don't need to because this cable that I'm using worked just fine on one camera. I'm gonna show you why you still need to do a cable test on a cable that you verified working good with one camera. So this is the crossed wire cable that we tested earlier. And to identify it, I put a peak little post-it note around it. Let me show you 
this will work just fine with one camera with a skipped wire, I mean a crossed wire, watch this. So I got the cable with the crossed wire working just fine on one camera. As you can see, the PoE light and the network activity light is flashing rapidly, indicating that it's a good connection. Camera works just fine, yet we have a bad cable. Now I'm gonna install this cable on the PoE combiner and splitter and let me show you what it does. Now I have that cable with a crossed wire on one of the little short runs from the splitter to the camera. Doesn't really matter which cable it um, is that's bad. If it's a bad cable in any of these three cables, it's gonna cause issues. So as you can see, this one with the good cable works fine. Getting a video feed. This one right here with the bad cable, nothing, it's frozen. Again, you know, this was the most common reported problem. I only get one camera to work. Well, the reason because that is one of your three cables is bad. To hammer my point home and beat a dead horse, I am going to show you why a bad cable will still run on one camera. Check this out. So I've got a, a perfectly fine cable here. I am going to cut four wires out of this cable. I'm going to cut the blue pair. I'm going to cut the brown pair. Check that out. That's a pretty bad cable. Let's see if it works on one camera. As you can see, it seems to be working. We got this bad cable here with four cut wires and only four connected wires, yet it's working just fine on one camera. So when you know people tell me, I don't need to test my cable because it works just fine on one camera, it's always worked. You know, this is the uh, cable I've had connected to my camera for many months, many years, and I never had any problems with it. Well, let's install this cable with the PoE combiner and splitter and see what happens. All right, so you remember that cable that uh, we've been using for years and it's worked just fine? Well, it is still working just fine, but just for one camera. This is the only camera that it's working on. The other one, it's not working. Why? Because these two cables are good right here. It's this one cable out of the whole bunch that's causing the issue. This is the main cable that runs from the splitter to the combiner. But if this cable was on one of these, it would still have the same issue. So that's why you gotta test all three cables. But um, this is why I always ask people, please be sure to test all three of your cables because even if you've been using a cable and it's worked just fine on one camera, it does not mean it's a fully good cable. You can see here, we're only getting one activity light for these two ports. We should be getting two down there. We're not, because it's not making a good connection. So to recap, number one, one rule, test your cables. Do it no matter what. Even if you're a 20 year veteran, please test your three cables because you know we all make mistakes, even to this day, even if you've been in the field for 20 years. Um, rule number two, this is um, a little less uncommon uh, issue, but it does happen. N don't exceed 328 feet of a cable run. And when I say 328 feet, go from here, from your PoE switch or your PoE MVR to the end of a camera. So let's say this cable was 200 feet. And you have another cable that was a hundred feet, okay? The, I mean, these cables don't have to be short. They can be as long as you want them to. Normally they're just, you have two cameras side by side, but sometimes some people put uh, these two cameras that are, you know, far apart from each other. It doesn't matter, but this cable, let's say it can be 200 feet. This cable right here can be a hundred feet. So that's 300 feet. That's perfectly fine. And this cable can also be 
100 feet. So basically you want to measure from the end of a camera to the switch and make sure that cable run is no longer than 328 feet. Okay. Rule number three, um, I always recommend to configure and bench test your camera before adding to the PoE combiner and splitter. Make sure it works on just one cable, like use a little pre-made cable and connect to your PoE switch or your PoE NVR, just a little short cable while you're inside your house or wherever this installation is, as opposed to adding this right off the bat to your PoE combiner splitter. That way you can rule out if it's a configuration issue, you know, you want to rule everything out before you put the combiner and splitter on the installation. So if you still have issues after that, feel free to shoot me an email and I'll be glad to help you. Thanks for watching.